at that time, you can either recharge or just put in more gas and then wait until you're able to get to a place where you can charge. You can charge a 110 volt outlet, mm -hmm. or you can have a 240 volt outlet uh, charging station and install it in your home. The 110 volt outlet takes eight hours to charge, 240 volt, four hours. I guess what I was, was, what I was thinking about is I think that um, electricity and gasoline are roughly equivalent in terms of their pricing depending on what the, what the current price of gasoline is. So if that's true, I mean, it, it, if, if the price is twice as much, um, but, but the mileage is three times as much, I just wonder, you know, what are people's thoughts about that? I mean, does that seem like a worthwhile investment? You know, I mean, I, I kind of put that out there to yeah, the audience. Yeah, I was going to ask something similar, like, you know, what's the comparative cost per mile driven? You know, if I'm driving my electric car, how much am I paying per mile to drive my car? Mm -hmm. If I'm driving a gas-powered car, how much am I driving, paying per mile to drive that car? And right. So if I'm going 100 miles, right. which one is going to cost me more? Are there any of those numbers available? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that I have any numbers on that. I imagine Detroit probably has something on that. I imagine Detroit probably has something on, on that, but I, I don't have any of those numbers saying which one would cost you more. Probably one of the first things to think about is this, is, is it going to be beneficial to you? An electric car right now isn't for everybody. Myself, like I said, I'm getting 33 to 38 miles per gallon. City and highway combined out of Malibu with a four-speed automatic transmission. It's not a hybrid. So I don't really have the need for a hybrid or an electric car. But for somebody else that's saying, well, I, that's what I want to have, it can be beneficial to them because even the Volt, when it's running on electric, it's still saving the money, even 35 miles. There are people who may drive on a, in a Volt, say 17 miles one way, 17 miles back, plug it in, they haven't used any gas. They're using strictly electric. Now, the uh, car takes eight hours to charge 110 volts, so when they get up in the morning and they want to go to the store or go to the church or go to kids or grandkids house or go to the park or someplace else, they drive on electric, come back home, drive on electric. So they can go on electric most of the time. The 9.2 gallons of gas that's in the gas tank does have to be used sometimes during the year and the computer will monitor that and switch to gas, the gas powered electric generator to use that and you just refill that gas tank. Can you give us like an equivalent to charging up your, your volt is an equivalent to say a microwave or a DVD player, portable DVD player? What would like the equivalent be? The amount of electricity used uh, to charge up your volt is about the same as a hair dryer mm -hmm. being used continuously for the full eight hours. Okay. 1,800 watts. 1,800 watts for how many hours? Uh, 12 hours? Yeah, I don't know the actual numbers on that. That's the uh, one person I've been given. Okay, now, the electric car to me is a great idea, but there seems to be one flaw a uh, used car value because the battery deteriorates over time, right? And then if you sell it, if somebody buys it as a used car, they'll have to purchase another battery or something, wouldn't they? Well, the battery on um, anything is going to last forever, but the Volt, first off, has a battery pack with cells that the cells can be replaced rather than necessarily the whole battery pack. Mm -hmm. It's just like before when you had maintenance-free batteries, and I mean maintenance batteries, not maintenance-free maintenance batteries, you'd go in and they said, oh, this cell and that cell is dead. And they'd go in and rebuild that cell. And then have a rebuilt battery that you could buy. But the warranty on the batteries are eight years, 100,000 miles from the factory. And after that time, if you have something, yes, they can take the battery pack out, replace the cells, and put it, you know, put it back in. Okay, so like suppose you have a charging station where in the battery pack could come out and they could just put another battery pack in there. Wouldn't that be better than trying to do that? 
It might seem so, but unfortunately, it's not like the tools that you are able to change yeah. battery packs. Right. Okay? Because this is a battery pack, if you notice in the film, they had to lift this battery pack up with a hoist. It is a long T-shaped battery. There's a lot of different cells in it. It's a 16 kilowatt hour battery. There's a lot of electricity with this. I mean, when an electrician and a technician works on it, he takes a lot of the same safety precaution that Nazi takes when they work on a high power line outside of the house. So it's more than just changing something out. There's a lot of things involved with it. But you have to have that high capacity battery in order to have that 35 mile range. How much does uh, one of these batteries cost, or how much of the cost of the car does the battery yeah. account for? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have those numbers. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, there's a company called Better Place uh, there was Shai Agassi who was on this film. He started a company based on the concept where they pull into service stations, they pull the battery pack out, and they plug it and they went back in and it's fully charged. Uh -huh. So it's possible. It's being done uh -huh. in Israel and um, they're piloting some programs in Hawaii and, and in San Francisco. Uh -huh. um, and on the cost issue, I think you just look at your, mm -hmm. your electricity provider and you get a kilowatt hour rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you multiply, you know, by how many kilowatt hours of demand or load that your battery pack would require. Yeah. And that's that's simply, I think, how you can try to get to a, a figure of what it would cost to drive a certain amount of miles yeah. on a pure electric uh, charge. Well, if it's helpful, I, I think there's about 34 kilowatt hours in a gallon of gasoline, approximately. Really? And at about at about 10 cents a kilowatt hour, that's about. That, that's, uh, yeah. Is that what it is locally? I mean, in, in yeah, New Orleans? Yeah, 10 cents a kilowatt. Well, 11, 10, 10, 11. About 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the battery in the Volt is 16, 20, kilowatt, 16 hour. kilowatt hours. So mm -hmm. if that range is 35 miles and it's costing you a dollar sixty, if it's 16 kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. 10 cents, that's incredibly cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's, 34 kilowatts in one gallon of gasoline is equivalent to one gallon of gasoline. Right. Now so the other thing too is this, is that you drive to work. If there's a 110 volt outlet available, I know there are a lot of parking lots where you'll find something like folks that have a 110 volt receptacle. There, you can plug in your bolt right there and charge it while you're at work. Mm -hmm. But also, there are other public places like Whole Foods on Magazine Street just opened a couple of charging stations there where they allow their customers to come in and charge their boat or electric car mm -hmm. uh, while they're shopping. Uh, we have a charging station in Vanna. And uh, there are a couple of other charging stations already or getting ready to be installed. We put one in an apartment garage downtown already um, a couple weeks ago. Right, so they're starting to deploy. Market. And where else have you installed them besides that? Well, the Whole Foods was one, and the parking garage one. We've done a couple of uh, Chevrolet actually out in Mississippi as well. But there's <laughs> other. I don't remember. There's LSU or some other place here that's uh, soon or something. It's also uh, getting ready to install a charging station or their. Um, Parking lot. So there are going to be more and more places for charging as time goes on. There's some more electric cars out there, the demand increases, then you'll find there are more charging places available. But the Volt allows you to get out of town when Katrina is moving in <laughs> so that you're not looking for a charging station. You can keep going with a gas powered electric generator until you are able to get some place to charge or to put more gas in to keep going. So once again, you get to your destination and plug in for the, uh, the charger. Did I hear somewhere that some of the uh, major car rental agencies are now offering either hybrids or pure electrical cars to their clients, their customers? I thought I saw something on the news that some of the major hotel chains are, are now in oh. charging stations in their garage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of an obvious place if you're traveling and you just stop, mm -hmm. you're going to usually stop at a hotel. There's a, there, there are several um, opportunities 
for not just hotels, but uh, developers who are interested in gaining LEED certification, for instance. Uh, there is a prerequisite for uh, different densities of buildings for LEED certification that they have a charging station that give preference to uh, uh, electric vehicles or alternative fuel vehicles. So, you know, there are many opportunities for things like that, not just for electric vehicles, but also for compressed natural gas vehicles, uh, biodiesel vehicles, um, that is a prerequisite for certain scales of commercial lead buildings. Mm -hmm. So are the, um, are the charging stations universal? Does it matter what type of electric car you have? Uh, most of the charging stations um, have adapters, and so... Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there are actually, before I came over here, I was talking to one of our local contractors who is installing solar charging stations, um, both for the home and for commercial uh, facilities. And so, you know, folks, uh, you know, there is local capacity for you to use alternative fuel vehicles, um, uh, particularly electric vehicles. I saw recently that there are, um, I think at, what is it, Clearview Mall, I think I saw a charging station. And, uh, there are some other commercial buildings locally so as we consumers become more interested in the environment and uh, spending money with businesses that are uh, at least thinking of the environment, businesses then in turn become more interested in implementing uh, things that make them uh, at least appear to be more environmentally friendly. And charging stations is just one element of that. Is it possible for maybe the state to get interested in putting charges in rest stops? Uh, how long does it take to charge though? I, mean, I wonder if that would be, you'd be at a rest stop long enough to get much uh, charge. Well, it depends on the voltage of the, of the adapter of the, the charging station. Okay. Yeah, last well, I heard that you can buy like a special, like a more expensive charge that will actually charge the car in like half the time. Um, I've heard that there are some flash chargers in development already in production, but I'm not familiar with them personally. The only thing about flash charging is it does affect the life of the battery. Mm. That long-term trickle charge is a lot better, whether long-term is four hours or eight hours. It's better for the life of the battery. So yes, you could get a quick charge with some of these others, but end up having to replace the battery sooner or replace cells in the battery sooner and then incur that expense. That's, that's kind of like the same thing with um, computers and uh, phones, is that they say you wait for your phone or your laptop to com be completely <coughs> dead before you want to charge it up again. Right. Like that same type of idea. But I had a question. Uh, I found it interesting in the, the movie for them to talk about the more you use your electric car, the cleaner it becomes. So I guess my question is, what happens if the environment or the community that you live in is not making that, that push towards electric cars, though? And you're like the, the lone ranger out there. Does it, does, the, does it still apply? I mean, can you find somebody to work on it? Uh, is there a place to charge it? Yeah, because you can charge it at home, but that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Yeah, that would still apply. I mean, the more electric cars are out there, the less emissions there are, less carbon uh, being added to the atmosphere and so forth. But also, your higher mileage vehicles, like for example, the uh, Cruise, gets 42 miles to the gallon, the Eco Cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sonic gets 35 miles to the gallon on the LS, the LT, 38 miles to the gallon. The more miles per gallon you have, less carbon you're using. Large trucks and buses and all. In fact, we have some buses in the, in the city right now that are propane or electric. And the larger trucks and everything have cut back on emissions. So they've gone to